I wanted to point out, number one is once you have logged into Arena, you'll have this little circle up here in the upper right hand corner that has your initials in it. And once you click that, you drop down and you have several settings. And the one you may want, you may want to look at is the help. Because you're on the screen and you're going, what am I supposed to be doing here? Well then, if that page has a help, click that option, come down to help, and it will, you can either print that help screen or you can just read it and, and, and process it uh, electronically. So that is on, should be on most pages, if not all pages in arena. All right. And that print page, is the page you're on, you bring it in again? Yes, whatever page you're on here. Uh -huh. All right. The uh, second thing I want to talk about is uh, data integrity and data timeliness. Um, I had one lady or one church ask me, well, can we, um, I want to be able to analyze all of the giving by county. And my question was, do you have the county indicated or on the person's record? And she said, no. I said, no, I said, we can't do that. You know what, as nice as arena and databases are, we can't give you information that's not in the system. So if you want to know how many redheaded deacons you have, then you have to put that in the system somewhere. And because of the expansion of the system, how more people will be using it, that means that the more, the, the, the timeliness of that data is as important as the accuracy. So be able to pull that in at the right time. So just word of, uh, of a suggestion is that make sure that you uh, put, the time, put the information in and put it in a timely fashion. Question. Do the data fields come from a central point, i.e. the office or somewhere? So if I'm doing something, I realize, oh, it would be nice for me to have this it's all based on security so yes they can offer it where you can put your own fields in there or they could they can have it where it all goes through the uh to the dba that's again it's a choice that comes to me all right so let's finish up with events All right, so we were on payments and fees. And I think we pretty much covered that, covered the uh, event cost options, the additional fees and the payment processing. So try to make the fees as uh, simple as possible. And then you can use the different kind of discounts. So the discount, the group discount can be based on a certain number and it can be based on a percentage or an amount. The early bird discount can also be based on an amount or a percentage. And then whatever end date, or if you just want to use the first payment date as that option. And then you have discount codes. So this is where your flexibility comes in to how much if you're going to pay your, your uh, sponsor's fee for the event totally, then they can just type in sponsor or whatever in the, as a code. You can limit the number of, of, of codes used. So if you find that people are sharing their discount codes. <gasps> oh my goodness. I thought only Baptist did that. Um, <laughs> it's because I am one. I have, no, I haven't done it. I haven't done it. But you could say, okay, this is discount code number one. You know, one person can use it. So when you tell that person to do discount code one, nobody else can use it. Or if you, you know, open it up to, uh, to uh, more people, then you can either leave maximum allowed zero to do all of them, and then uh, allow the discount codes to be uh, used however you need to be. So that's the way you can be a little more flexible with your, uh, with your cost. 
<clears throat> All right, the advanced tab simply allows you to rename your fields. So instead of discounts, I want it to say scholarships. And so at that point, they you don't have to, um, um, you know, discount may not be appropriate, but you can then say, use these different uh, options to, for example, registration units, so individual, you could say church, if this was a, a event where just churches were registered. And then, and so just, so in other words, because this, um, well, this is just events, though. This, does the registration form let you do this too? Just like we talked about the registration form doubling as a sales tool, also. Mm -hmm. so this is where we change those descriptions. Correct. So we're just selling the book, we're selling the shirts. Correct. All right, so once registration is all done, it's out there on the web, people start signing up then you want to see who those people are. So that would be weird. Yes, I, I don't remember who told them, who said that, but they were a very wise person. Um, it's in my computer. Let's see, that's working. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm getting a message on my other screen over here. So it's actually, there's a reason for it just wasn't popping up on that screen. So I'll click OK there. And guess what? It all works fine. Well, you have to log in again too after 15 minutes? Even on my local one, I do, yep. <coughs> I should change it, but I guess I want people to realize that it's, you know, I feel your pain. <laughs> All right, so the people who have logged on and registered and are responsible for the payment are called registrations. So you can see that tab here. The people that are actually going on the trip event are called registrants. So if it's a parent registering two children for camp, the parent will be here, the two children will be here. If this is a, a men's conference and I'm registering myself, I will be the registration and the registrant. So same thing either way. And so you see the number of registrants, you see the total cost, total payments, the five payments, remaining balance. Uh, the when it was created and whether you can remove that person because they had not had any payments yet. So at the bottom of the registrations tab, you can communicate with the registrations. On the bottom of the registrants tab, you can communicate with them. How can you have fewer registrants than you do registrations by your definition? Because I have a weird different weird database. It's just it's not normal. But in, in my system, with all the playing we've done on this database, somehow it got to where somebody did not have a registrant on the registration, which is hardly, is not normal, not possible normally. Okay. So it's just one of our little... We'll just take it as a quirk. Yes. Because you see on this guy right here, he has zero registrants. And you can't do that. You can't register with someone without registering. But you can throw that one in the garbage, right? You mean like, like that? Yeah. And let's see who the other one is. No one here.
Okay, so match. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for thank you for cleaning my database. Out. Not quite, but right? <laughs> it's close. Nobody else will ask that question. <laughs> yeah, nobody else will ask that question to me. All right, so then you can communicate with the registrants. Uh, occurrences is where I do what? Attendance. Track attendance, exactly. And there I'll see my attendance summary. And so then I also have my transactions. And so here's where I see all of the transactions, whether they are manual payments or whether they were online payments. And so here's all the different payments for this. And then I can filter all those out up here through it by date or by person, uh, by the check number or credit card transaction number, the type, all those different things. And then that's my uh, results down here. And then based on how the sequence of the, how the financial team works that, this is where it creates a journal entry in the financials. So either they may say, we want to do that, we're going to be doing that, or it could be that they be, they're having you to do that. But that's when you determine which accounts you'll be hitting when it's posted to your ledger. It's implied. Um, the applied amount? Yeah. So in this case, uh, they, again, if, and this is normal, well, that's a negative, so that's because of NSF, that would be unapplied. Mm -hmm. But in this one, the case is, um, again, because of when the database was done, you should never have any that are, that are on a, that this should always be the same, like this and this. But it's a, this one because it's a negative. And this one because, again, okay, let's look at the, let's look at the payment here. See, so what happens is once you have the, it's the same guy who had the problem with, that's probably the same uh, reason when we deleted, yeah. So that's going to be, that's when we deleted. Okay. Well, let me delete, it won't let me delete that payment though, I don't think. No. So in this case, what happened was the registrant was removed, but not the registration. And so the payment that was put on there was, was now disconnected. So it's not applied. So a payment that's applied means that I've taken the payment and I've applied it through the registration to the registrant. So I know that Kyle's son got credit for that payment. But since we kind of went backwards with that, it threw that off. You should not ever find these revenues over there unless it was a, a negative. All right, so that takes us through groups and tags. So let me stop a minute. Let's do a little bit of review and just kind of let you process this before we change directions. Now let me also reiterate that there are, there's help again in the system. There's also help on the showthesystems.com website. There's also a arena community where you can actually ask other users if anybody's using this or uh, like scanners, you know, do you have any recommendations from scanners? And somebody said, well, don't use this one. They didn't do this, this, or this, or whatever. So that's the way you can actually communicate with other users. Uh, and uh, that might be something that we could talk, we could do a community post to see out there who's using the events uh, or camps, using events for camps. So anyway, <clears throat> those things are important and those give you the ability to, to work with other uh, clients. So let's, again, can you have, uh, what kind of discounts can you have with an event? Yeah. Promotion discount codes. And what's the third one? Group discount, very good. So you have group and hard bird and then regular discount codes. Um, if I am registering my child for the camp, is my child the registration or the registrant? Registration. <laughs> I think I heard both. <laughs> Aunt, Aunt <or> <laughs> the registrant, correct. 
And what would I be then? Very simple. What if I go to camp as a sponsor? I'll be both. Okay, very good. All right. Um, can I require a certain amount of money to be paid at registration? Yes. All right. And do you remember what field controls that? That was a, that's a, that's a tricky one. Hmm. Can someone tell me where I would go to find that? What was the question? <laughs> Payments and fees. Payments oh, yeah. and fees. Okay, okay, registration. And then what field determines whether the uh, this the different items are required or not? So what is that? Okay, it's the active? Is that what you're no. getting to? Is that cost? No. Okay, one more field. <laughs> the discount cost? The day due. For the day two. <laughs> What was so your we, question? Uh, I forgot. What was the question? <laughs> Let me edit this so it makes it a little more makes a little more sense. Let's change this to. Uh, I'm on the event. Okay, and this was something that uh, the um, edit details is where you go to get into the detail of the item. So. Um, I noticed or someone earlier said, well, I can't get to where you are, and it's because she did not click edit details. So uh, that's a, an extra, extra step you have to do. Okay. So now, when I register, I always have to pay the deposit because that's back in 2012. If I registered before February 1st, then this was optional. If I registered after February 1st, then the $5 deposit and the $10 first payment was required. When does, when is all uh, $25 required at registration? After the 13th of March. After the 13th of March. So this is very important as you, the due date is very important for that. And so, yes, in the new system, the new, uh, the updated system, I can pay anything after I come back. So you can always come back. I paid $5 and now I want to pay $15. So by going to the link on the external website, called my registrations here, I can go and make secondary payments. But say, I don't want to, you used to, you had to pay $10 increments. They would either pay five or 10 or 10 or 15 or 25. Now, if I want to pay $5 deposit and I want to put 15 down, because that's all I want to do right now, the system will let you do that. You can put down a custom amount. Ben, uh -huh. um, most everybody knows, in this room knows we don't usually do payments that way for event registrations. Um, and if we were to use the system this way, we, we would end up paying transaction fees every time they correct they made another payment. So it ends up costing more to let someone make, someone make multiple payments. So you would just put the full payment full full event cost in here as one option. So would you would it be required when they register or not? We usually take one. Payment. Would it be required though to pay? Yeah, they don't complete their registration without. Okay, so then the date would be put the full amount here and just put the date in the past. <coughs> yeah, so you put the full amount here, but then if they, the discount would, then you could reduce that amount, the total amount. Yeah, 
All right. All right, so let's, uh, if everybody good with the vents and in tags, in groups, ready to move forward to reporting? All right, so let's go to <coughs> now. I'm sorry, did we do creating profiles? That, yeah, well, the creating profiles are tags. So it's not a, a not a, unless you're talking about profile being the actual entry well, of a record. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just looking at Yeah, at that point, creating these profiles, my understanding was that is tags in groups. So that's what we did there. Now, if it's entering profiles, that'll be something we'll cover, cover tomorrow with just you admins. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the difference between what you see with reports here and what you see on uh, public and my list. I'm going to go to the same sites when we get the same results. So public list and my list is the internal report generator for the system, which uh, is equivalent to selections and listings in V5. So you've been using those. Uh, I think you'll find that it's a lot more friendly of a tool than uh, selections and listings is, but that's what that is. What's the difference between my list and public lists? Membership. I'm under membership. Yeah. So on the main site, you're under membership, and then either down in public list or my list. All right, so what's the difference between those two? I presume that my list is the one that you created by yourself and it's private for, for reports, yeah? I mean, you're the only one that can pull it. You're the only one that can see it. Now, that means you're the only one that can, if it's a public list, that means anybody can see it, anybody can edit it, and anybody can delete it. So it's more than just anybody being able to run it. So you could, have a my list and change it to a public list so everybody else can mess with the one out there but they're not going to mess with your original one but everybody likes your report so much they want out there to be able to use so of course that they're just i'm sure that you'll come up with a fee structure for that you know. can, can you do the do the other have have something on a public list that you see that somebody somebody else may have created and copy it to, change, my, list. Co copy it to my mm -hmm. list so you could then yep. monkey it to your own yeah. correct you can do it either direction. All right, so this is the, you can make your reports this way. You can say, on anybody in this district who has served on this committee and is this certain age. So you can be as specific as you want in that criteria for that. The reports up here are reports that have been created by us, by us as a company, and they're built in a uh, Microsoft tool called Reporting Services. And so these can be edited, but it takes a little more energy and, and, and expertise to be able to, to, uh, to uh, edit these. If I want to run a birthday list, here, birthday report, you see it pulls everybody who has a birthday this month. Okay, well, that's cool, but it's not doesn't give me all the people in my district that have birthdays this month. It's everybody. I can limit it down by age so I can get everybody who's at, in the high school and that has birthday this month. But it's that's the only limitation you can put on at this point. So, but you can then have someone in your business, whether it's, um, you know, if you're in the district that actually comes in and edits this report, and then you can maybe add an option up here for district. And then you could add a uh, drop down district and then do a report for that. So that's something it's they are customizable, but it does take someone with that expertise to be able to customize it. So it's better and most probably nine. Is that written in SQL? Uh, the query is written in SQL, SQL, but the actual report is written in uh, Visual Studio. Oh. 
So obviously you're, you just went up in everybody else's opinion using that really cool word SQL in there. So everybody, now you're in trouble because everybody thinks you're smart. And they're gonna start coming to you. But, oh, okay, good. All right, so the bulk of your reports are gonna be from public list and my list. And then the ones that are unique and need a specific uh, options like, you know, we're talking about a, uh, a name tag with the barcode on it so we can scan it. So that would be a customized <laughs> report. It'd be real simple, but it would be a report that would look like this, but it would have a barcode down here at the bottom. So you could use the scanner to do check in and check out. That would be an example of a custom report. So let's click on public lists. All right, and so initially you have the category here, which is a filter. So you can filter out either by ministry or by district or by however you need to uh, limit those reports uh, down because again, with the number of people you have, you're gonna have a lot of reports. Uh, the selections and listings reports do not convert. So if you run some selections and listings report, there's a little button at the top that says print criteria. And so print that so you'll at least know what you're, what you have selected as the who, what, and the where of the, or who, what, and the how of that report so you can recreate it. All right, so if we go down here, there, you see the little copy function here. So if I want to copy this to a, a uh, my list or a public list, then that's the copy function, or I just want to create, just want to copy it. All right, and then of course I'm gonna delete it there. So to create a new one, down here there's an option for basic and advanced. Basic is, uh, basic of all the criteria is a cumulative or like an and function, an and, uh, if I want to sound smart like her, I would say and boolean, but <laughs> then everybody just looks at me weird, so. That is an and or or before. So and would be all the females. So I now I've learned down who are in a certain district. So that brings it down a little further. Who have a birthday this month, so it even brings that even further. All those are and. But maybe I wanted to say, give me everybody in who has a birthday, who's a female, who has a birthday in this district or this district. Then I would use an advanced list because advanced allows you to introduce the or uh, operator. So we will start with basic. So I'm going to just come down here and click on that little. Now, everybody who wants to do this, are you finding this okay? Everybody with me? Okay. So click that little add option and then you give it a list. So we'll call it the. Uh, Colston. All right, and so then I can, um, this is an important function here is this person list or parent list. So a person list, I'll get a list of all of the people who have a birthday. In the parent list, I am picking the children and I want the parents to get the communication. So I pick all the children who are registered for an upcoming event and I want to email the parents. That is a parent list, not a person list. So we will select person list for this example. Uh, okay, we'll go to next. You can categorize it at that point, select a category. So this is the criteria screen. I'm gonna recommend that and unless for some reason you know that you want inactive deceased people, make sure you always click active under record status on every report. What screen are you on this screen here? 
Uh, you just click next. Okay. Overlook that. Sorry. All right. So I'm going to pick active under record status. And now you have access to basically every field in the system to be able to use as a criteria for this report. So if I was to follow through and with the uh, eHarmony, we're going to say we want to pick all the males who are single between the age of 20 and 40. And everything is and, so everything I add is going to reduce the number of records that pull. Um, now, under extended criteria, I can do uh, between uh, day, birth date, birth month, birth day, anniversary date, uh, how many adults are in the family, how many children are in the family, are they serving anywhere or not, which is important, how many hours they're serving, the grade range here. Under advanced criteria, we get into phone numbers and addresses and distance from the church. Personality section, uh, like I said, this is not a yes or no question. Small group criteria, it looks like if I wanted anyone who's in the Fridays, let's just say children's Sunday school. If I put a check mark beside Children's Sunday School, that will include everything underneath it. Or I can come and uncheck part of it. If I check fifth grade again, you see that it is making, it puts it as a red X. That means it excludes the fifth grade. So that would mean if for any other reason through the other, uh, other criteria so far, um, it would exclude the fifth graders. <coughs> the scenic South District go here. Yes. The Camp Bays Mountain. Is that a camp? All right. The rocks. <laughs> So if I continue to click, then it makes it turns off. So one click includes it, two clicks excludes it, third click takes uh, means it's not part of the criteria. Tag criteria works the same way. Camp Bay's Mountain is a party. I like this. It's an awesome tag. Okay, nice. All right, so if I wanted to select those, I would just put a check mark there. If I wanted to exclude them, I'd put a two, X, two check clicks. <laughs> shall not exclude. Send kids to Camp Basement. Okay. I like it. All right, so you can then pick by a certain status of the tag. You can pick by the active date, inactive date any notes, so you still have all those options there. You can do sports criteria, campaign criteria, contributions, education, uh, membership details, member path. So this, and you might have one here for pastor credentials. You may have one here for church information. So every field that you have in the system is available to be used in this, uh, in this report. So what I have is active, males who are single and between a certain age. All right, so I'm through with that. I'll come down here and click next. And now you have the fields that you want. And so you pick the fields that you want on this report. And so you can add more fields from over here in the available fields. And you can rearrange the ones over there by highlighting them and click the little up and down buttons over there. Interesting. All right, once I pick that, I click next again. 
then I come here and say what I want the actual field heading name to be. So what they did is those field names were alphabetical. And I can see that someone has been playing in this database and they said, well, if it's alphabetical, if I put the numbers in front of it, will it make it out? Will it make it uh, sort it the way I want it? Well, the answer is yes. But now you have these numbers in front of it, which you can rename here. And then that takes care of that. So which is easier, moving them up and down every time or just changing the number in that? So it's interesting looking at these databases and seeing how people have kind of played with them and, and thought through things. But you could take that one off, the two off, the three off, the four off here, and it would still leave it sorted correctly in the, in the list. And then if I want any of this to be right justified or centered, I can change the alignment here. Because it's going to give it, the result is going to be kind of like a table. All right, so I click next again. Now, how, I want it to be, how do I want it to be sorted? So I want it to be last name first, then uh, first name. I can add more fields or I can remove those. Now, and next, uh, I can run this list now, just in case you want to read the SQL code. There it is. Now, the only time I recommend you read the SQL code is if you're having trouble going to sleep at night. <laughs> just pull that out, you'll go right to sleep. Better than melatonin. All right, this is available to everyone. Now, this was the very last checkbox in the whole process. If I cleared that check, is it a public or my list? So obviously, the last step is to whether I'm going to make it public or private or mine. It doesn't matter where you go to start a list. You can start in my list and still make it a public list or vice versa. So no big deal, just make sure that this last check mark is set correctly <coughs> and then click finished. Now, if you did this in B5, you could get up, go to the restroom, go do whatever, but you see this runs almost instantaneously. So here's all the men that apply to that. If I go down to the very, very bottom, I see a number of 125 records that were pulled by this result. If you get no results here, that would mean that you have put in too much criteria, either one or two things. Either you put in too much criteria and it didn't pull any results, or number two, the data you're looking for is not in the system or not on the person's record. So I might have added a county in there, but no one's gone in and put the county from the records on the, what their county is on their records yet. So one or two things, or one or three things. Number one is that the uh, criteria is too small. Number two, the data doesn't exist. Number three, the data is not put in there uh, correctly. So I may be searching for a record by a certain field, but then when I actually go to that, that not being consistently tracked on there, maybe and wedding anniversary dates in two different fields. And so we need to consolidate that so that it's is, uh, correct. So now that I've got this information in here, what can I do with it? Yes, sir. If I search for a field in blank, is that going to invalidate the whole sort of record process? Or? Well, it depends on if that's your only criteria. Okay. If that's your only criteria, yes. If, if it's not, then no. I'll still pull the criteria based on all the others over there. But it's an AND, isn't it? You said it was an AND function. Correct, but if it's blank, and he just puts, doesn't, if, if it's blank, it's not going to use it as a criteria. Because at that point, it doesn't, it's, it's kind of like not clicking up. Although, you can, then the, well, I think what you're referring to is that if I, uh, I can go to a text field and I have an option to say, is that blank or not blank? In that case, if I say it's not it's blank, then it's going to use it as a criteria. So if I just leave it blank and there's no data in it, it's no big deal. But if I actually put that extra level in there, then it will start using it. So I'll show you that in just a minute. All right. So here we have all these gentlemen. Your old Lance Armstrong's in there. Um, 
So what can I do with it now that I have it here? Well, at the bottom of the screen, I have the exact same options I have before. I can create labels here by using the word merge. And this word merge here, person labels, and pull it down here, I open that, and now I can print labels. Now it will automatically, if you're using that word at the bottom, it'll automatically combine the families. So if Fred and his wife were there, say Fred and Judy Barton, or if they have a couple of children, say the Barton family. So it automatically combines those um, as, as it needs to. Now, any of these other, these are just Word documents that have um, merge fields in them. So you can create any number of different types of uh, fields. Again, you could, um, like we're talking about with the barcode on it, you could actually have a name tag, you have a name tag here option. On that name tag, you put the field down there, put that barcode on it, and it would barcode font, and it would then create it from here as well. So this is probably a lot more flexible than doing it from a, uh, a customized report. So you just have to, we just, it takes a, a little bit of practice, a couple of times, and after that, uh, you just have to uh, create the file, upload it, and it's ready to go. So there's a lot of them that are here, but you can also create new ones. All right, you have your Excel option, you have your email option, you have your text option. Now, up here at the top, we have available reports. Well, actually available merge documents, which looks a lot like the ones we just saw, doesn't it? I can still come down here and do name tags, uh, or person labels or whatever. So I still have the same functions here that I do when I click the word option down at the bottom. It does the same thing except for one minor change. If I do not want to combine the family members, I want the husband and wife to get a label, then I would need to come up here, uncheck combine family members, and then do person labels. So down here on the bottom, it's always going to combine the family. If I don't want that family combined, then I would do it here. Yes, sir. Ken. Is the uh, text option a CSV format? Down here in the in the Excel. You said there was an Excel feature of email and the text. So you're talking text message. I'm talking SMS text message. Yeah, the, 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 the export here is Excel, not CSV. All right, so then we have some reports that we have designed, the reports that would normally be under here, that we have designed to work with this list. So if I want a directory of all these men that are in this list, then I can pick which directory I want, and I can like uh, pick uh, two column directories for the view. And so and then instead of giving me a uh, table type format, it actually gives me a, 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 for a, uh, a, a nice directory. And I'm going to export that to PDF and then So now I have a directory. So I went to the list to find out who I wanted in the directory. And then I used that report to give me the printout of that directory. So I want a directory of the district superintendents. I want a directory of, of um, a certain committee. And so this is how you can do that easily. So we have a three column, a two column, and then a single column and the two column and the single column will let you put pictures. If there's pictures in the system, we'll have to print the pictures. All right, so let's think of it. Let's go back and, and uh, make sure everybody's good on that. So 
once I have this report run, I can export Excel. I can email or send a SMS text message. How do you do the SMS text message? Uh, in this database here, it's not enabled, but it would normally be a little button right it in between there. Icon? Okay. Yeah, it looks like, uh, I'll show you mine. It's right there. All right, so once I have these, okay, so it says it has 125 items. Now, if this page size was 100, it's gonna load a little faster, but you see I have two pages here. So if I click print labels here, is it gonna print all of them or is it gonna print 100? I hope it prints all of them. You're right. It does. <laughs> Unless I do this, then it's only going to print 100. So if I want to select somebody to print on here that's not in the whole list, I would need to make sure I can see all pages. So I would need to do 125 here and then check them all because if I go to page number two here, it's going to uncheck everybody on page one. But as long as I leave it blank and have nothing checked, it's going to do everybody on the list on all pages. All right, so a bulk update. So I've found all these people. I want to move them to a tag or something. I can move that, do all that one time. I can um, find out that this couple of these people are the same person. So Andrew and Brad, they're the same guy. I can merge them from this point, make them into one record. Or I can do an email and uh, export. Now, if this is set properly, and there's some settings you have to do in there, but then this would just send, just give you the data that you requested in the other fields you requested. <laughs> All right, so now let's go back and look at the advanced. So let's go back and do public or my list. Come down to the very bottom and pick advanced. And then click the little new button. This screen will look identical. As a matter of fact, there's only one screen on that whole process that changed. All right, we're gonna do a still do a person list. And again, if you have a category, you can select the category and then click next. And now this, this is the one screen that looks differently. Instead of having all those lines and fields and bars down here, it is simply going to make you build the screen. You build the screen by using what they call controls, which is the same thing as a field, and groups, or what it's called groups, uh, report groups. So I'm going to click this little, bit. there's no message on the screen that says click here first. So you have to come over here and click this screen first, and then it gives you the grouping. And then it doesn't tell you, but you have to come over here and click this little round thing here to add a control or a field. So I'm gonna start just like I did before, select record status, and that gives me the options. So I'll click active. They make it looks different yeah. than yours. Yeah, yeah. But does yours have all the, the bars across it and everything? It does. 
Okay, well, you're, if it has bars across it, you're in a, a basic list, not an advanced list. No, 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 it has. Advanced list control. Well, I have to drop down here. I have several of the report criteria boxes. One under the other description. Support zone. So does yours look like? This? No. Oh no, that's still that's still advanced. I don't know if mine looks like everybody else's, but it looks simply like yeah. this. Oh, well, that's just because you've added too many groups there. Well, it's but it yes, it just it populated that way. That's because you're all in, we're all in the same universe. Gotcha. I would, I would guess. But when I click the plus, it doesn't do anything either. So I'm not logged in. I'm logged in as a different user. So what you're finding is that it just looks like like so that. Same, without that record status and active. So yes. That, that's all gone. Um, yeah, you need to go next. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's why you, you'll all have your own login and everything, so. So let's say, I, I hope it doesn't. So I guess the, the moral of the story is, only one person clicked the, the control, okay? <laughs> Although it is interesting, I don't think I've ever seen that do that before, so. So it's not, we normally don't have everybody logged in as that. All right, so now I'm gonna come down here and I'm, you see it has an and option. So I can do and or or, I'm gonna leave it as and, because now I want a uh, marital status single. So I want that to be and. What was the first criteria? Record status active. All right, then I want a gender male. And then the last one was age. And I picked the wrong one. Now, but I do, I'm glad I did pick the wrong one because I wanted to point this out. If it's a text field, then I have, you know, normally we do equals to, but you also have some other options here. So I want to find out anybody whose nickname is blank. That's a weird nickname, isn't it? Uh, but this field means that that field is blank or not blank or like. So I can then put wildcard characters in there instead of which would be a percent sign. And so equal, not equal to starts with. So when you have a text field, you have those additional options that you can pick uh, to help with your search. So I need to remove that one. Really? That's why they get it all right. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta stop clicking. <laughs> yeah. And now it puts it right back. Oh, yeah, that's weird. You gotta re-click on your box. Uh, gender male. Oh, where I got that one. Uh, single male, and this would be um, age. That's what I want. Okay, so what have I done that I could not have done in a basic list? Nothing, except now I want to limit it down by a city. Okay, I can do that in a basic list. I want to limit it down to more than one city. I can't do that in a basic list. But I also can't do it in this grouping either. Because if I come down here and say, Memphis or Bartlett, then it, the or is going to mess up with this information up here. 
So I need to add another group. And so now I come and do under extended or advanced, I do city equal to Memphis. And I'm going to add another control. And I'm going to do city again. And Bartlett. Now, will this work like this? No, you have to change it to work. Okay, you can't have a city in the same, in the same city in both places. So I would come and select or here. Now, is this or here? No, 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 because I wanted to do all of this and do this, but I want those to be combined as a criteria. So remember the sixth grade where you had those plot those uh, those um, uh, uh, equations with the parentheses, and you hated them. You think I will never use those again, or you're using them again. I don't know what those are called, but. So it's going to be whatever here and here, and then what it's going to take whatever, it's going to uh, be those separate, and then whatever this does, it's going to combine those and limited or it's going to expand it. So then you, can you do another sub? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I can do another city, I can do another uh, zip code, I can do another grouping. Mm -hmm. so Categories at top are still the same basic criteria. Just the that's the subgrouping. So, well, maybe that's maybe it's just, a, it's a, it's a, it's a refresh issue. So, yeah, it should be this just should be record status. Yeah, good point. Record status, and this is uh, marital status, and this is gender. But it's still let you now. Yeah, when, when I did that, deleted that one, it kind of threw everything off. So, thanks for pointing that out. So, if you were to run this exactly like it is, uh -huh. the reason I'm pointing this out, you've got Memphis and Barrel test. So, yeah. what would it do? It would give me anybody from Memphis, but not anybody from Barlton because Barlton right. is right. whatever. Yep. Okay, great. But since it's an or, if it was and, it would blow the, it would blow everything up. The better. Is there is there a way that you can you can validate or, or have it? I mean, no. Some, some databases will kind of start to prefill or whatever. Yeah, no, that, that, that didn't do that here. And this, and this it does in some of the other areas, like names, it'll it'll do that for you, but or make suggestions, but not here in the report generator. So then, as, as somebody who's, I've only had like people put reports on my dashboard that I pull down. I don't go in and create reports in Shelby. I just pull them down. So I'll be, be able to create these now. Mm -hmm. um, this advanced control, list control, lets me pull from all the criteria that are available to me by security level in Shelby. Correct. So because um, right now, like I've had to have things set up in a little bit weird way because two modules don't talk to each other or something. That's how I had it explained to me. But everything should be in the same yes. yes. list. Okay. Yes. On the second grouping there, where you got Memphis or Barclay, could I have a new line that says and Alcoa? Yes. So you can mix the ors and the ands. Correct. It'll be Memphis in the second criteria would be and Barclay and, and Alcoa would have to show up for it. Correct. But most people wouldn't have their home city as Alcoa and Correct. So in this case, now again, understanding your point is that because it is a, a city field, I would say and state equals Mississippi. So yes, you would not want to put a city in there, another city, unless it was an or, but you could put another field in there that was an and. Yeah. So give me everybody in these two field, these two cities in Tennessee, but give me one, give me anybody who's in the state of Mississippi. 
So the city to your right would not work. Unless they were all or. So we'll conceivably have a personal record city and a church record city. Uh huh. So we can right. Okay. Now this would also not work. Anybody know why that wouldn't work? Because not necessarily. It's probably not in Mississippi. You do MS. Yeah, the, you're right. But the point is, the state is two two letter code, so it'd be MS, not or MI instead of MS. No, Mississippi is MS. So yeah. <laughs> So that would work, or except that Barbara or Memphis are not in the correct. Place, so you've knocked yourself out. So that's why I had to change that to or. Or I could come back and do another another group. So yeah, this can get a little complex, but again, that's why you go and you always run it and then verify it. Just kind of make sure that you're seeing the people that you think you should see. And then if you're not seeing the people that you think you should see, you go back, first of all, to your criteria to make sure it's not blocked it out. Second of all, go back to that record and make sure that that record has the information that you're looking for. Well, it's not pulling that pastor. That pastor still has the old address on his record. So it's not pulling him correctly. And this says it's going to kill everything if I do this. Did you say you cannot save these? Oh, absolutely, you can. Every, once you run it, it saves it. Is it named or can you name it? Now? You name it on the first screen. Yes. Let's see, going to kill the whole thing? No, okay. All right, so then when you get to this point here, and it runs, this is saved at this point. And then when I go back to public or my list, then it will be listed here. So Holston, <laughs> Holston cats, Holston dogs. It's new Holston. Your second one was new. Right. Okay. So here's that one. So it's it's stayed there. So I just come in here and see that I'm the one that's set up. So it's got my name on it. And when it was last run, how many and how many records were pulled when it ran, and then when I click it again, it will run it. But it will not just pull the same 125 records unless those 125 records meet that same criteria. So if someone is 40 right now, they turn 40 tomorrow, 41 tomorrow, it won't pull them on that report tomorrow. So this this list is showing up alphabetically. Correct. Can you sort it by date created? Yes, because all I have to do is click this heading up here at the top. It's a little starry. Um, it means that's a new report. And no one can really tell me how long it stays starred. <laughs> so whatever it puts, it puts it in there to let you know it's a new one, but how long is it new? I don't know. No, maybe it's just an old. No, it's not. It's there. It's there. There's no hand up on that one. Yeah, as long any screen that you come to and the the headers, the 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 column headers are in a, a dark blue. You can click on that and, and sort it by that field. So it's funny that these, I guess it was bumped off really quick from being that little star because it's not new anymore since that was all what, 15 minutes old? <laughs> since this one's so much newer than the other one. All right. So questions about lists. Um, the 
the advantage, I would always start with basic unless you know ahead of time that you're going to have to introduce the or logic. But I would go ahead and start with basic. But unfortunately, you can't convert one from advanced to lot to 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 uh, basic. You have to then start over with it. So if you know you need the or logic, then put that in there. You're going to do the advanced first. But if you're not sure and you just don't get the results you want, then you can create again as a advanced or a uh, basic. Because you can make an advanced with all ends in it. Sure. Yeah, if you start with advantage, you can do everything you can in the basic. It's just you can't do it opposite. Can't do it opposite. Did you say that if you started the basic, you can convert to it? No. And her point was if you start with advanced, you can always do You were correct. Some people like advanced because it's cleaner. It doesn't have that whole page worth of, of uh, criteria. So they'll use advanced not because they need a whole lot, but because they just like the way it works, looks better. Michael E. Harmony. So who's Michael? No, I'm not going to not going to, <laughs> not going to put their hands up on that one. <laughs> no, no dissonance there. <laughs> All right. Questions about um, the um, about lists. Hey Ben. Yes. We take a short break. We uh, at two twenty three. We've been uh, stopping and praying for our general conference. That's coming sure. Up. Would that be all right with you? Sure. Bob. <laughs> Seems appropriate. My phone told me it's time to pray about that time you all that. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Take a moment and just center your thoughts on our delegation. They will be heading to St. Louis and very quickly and uh, for the debate and the discussion and then I'll lead us in a prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for the time to be together and for this time of this day where we can stop and lift up all those that will be gathering in St. Louis next week for, for the general conference to, uh, to debate, to talk, to share. We pray for your presence to be known in a powerful way there folks ears to be open for everybody to remember you've got two ears and one mouth all right cool um let's see Let's do this. Let me at least show, I won't go into detail. I do want to show you the, the screen where you add new records. So the add new family. Now we'll spend for you, uh, 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 admin assistants will spend more, a lot more time on this tomorrow. I do just want to uh, show you that, again, if it's a person, if it's a business, I'm going to click that. And then just, if it's a church, I'm just going to put the church name in here because the church doesn't have a birthday, doesn't have a gender, that kind of thing, like uh, regular um, records do. And I can add more lines here if I have more family members to add all at one time. 
And then I go to the second tab so I can see the different um, member statuses and record status and those kind of things here. And then contact information is their phone numbers. Whenever you enter a phone number, just type in the 10 digits and let the system do the formatting. Not just like V5, just type the 10 digits and it will do everything else for you. And then under the addresses, that's where you have, like you have multiple addresses here. So you can put in their main address, business address, and you can add one here for church address, for, uh, parsonage address, whatever you need to put in here to track uh, for that person's record. So then you put the address in. And if I, if it's unique enough, I put the street address in and the zip, it will cast certify. If for some reason it's not, you have to put a street or a cove or something in there. Then you click standard address and it would then uh, try to standardize it again or just cast certify it. This is what you where you would go if the family moved. So it would take whatever main address, move that into an archive address, and then let you put in the new main address. So it's, it does that for the whole family for the main address. And if I need to put it, like I said, if I need to put a new address in there, then I can pick another address type and, and put that information in. But if it's a new family, then we wouldn't have an old address form. Correct. Right. It would just, it would just be once the family moves, one, an existing. Mm -hmm. Now, you also notice that it's giving me this little red, it's yelling at me down here. It's going to yell at you if it <laughs> finds the same name or the same address. So it gives you an idea of, oh, did you know that um, I'm adding an adult, but I didn't realize that the child went to camp. And so I can actually combine them into the same record at that point or as a family. So if you're editing a family, you still go to editing family? Correct. Well, if I'm, it depends on what I'm editing. Um, if I'm just editing... And yes, when I click on the address tab here and edit, it's going to take me right back to that same place it just was, just were. Yeah. Um, so yes, that takes me back because in the the only place you can edit the address is here. We have never put in families before. We've all put put in individuals. We've never put in a family and then added people to them. We've always been told previously that we put each person in individually. Okay, Sandy, you want to approach that? Yes, uh, we have not put in our clergy with family because a lot of the clergy want all of their males to come to the church. The wife is active in different in different uh, groups, etc., and has her home address, so she wants to receive her mail. So therefore, we did not combine our clergy into the family. Well, we didn't it, it's not just clergy. It's not just clergy. We haven't been to on anybody. But there's a way to do that. There's a way to do that. Yeah. yeah so, to do that. so what I would do is on the on the church, on the clergy, on the pastor, I would pick church address and click primary. So this primary then is whenever I use that, that the system automatically defaults to that primary address for that person. So you still put in like Lane family. Yeah. But you can't add everybody to this one. Though. Yeah, you can. Because I can go to my wife and say, I want to use the main home address for her as a primary. Oh, but it's all in one record. It's all in one family record, but it's all, they all have individual records. They're just linked together as a family. Ken? Somebody dies right now. If you cut family relationships, you change the, the address to deceased. You get this one. And it changes it for every family member. So you've got to go and unlink that stuff to the primary uh, person in the family before you can get the address. Well, in this system here, when you mark someone inactive, record status inactive, it says Y, <coughs> and you come down here and select deceased. So you handle it a little bit differently than you do. You don't have to change the address to. Now, is it. I, now in a church scenario, a lot of times I recommend that you go ahead and, and split that person out of the family so that you don't accidentally get a Mr. Or Mrs. to a widow or something like that. If you're sending a letter to the widow, 
Um, so you can move that person out of the family and that's really easy to do. You just have to determine how that all works as far as your, um, cause then come back over here and this little, I'm on the family record. And so this is where you add people to the family or let's add someone here. This is also where you can remove them from the family. Okay, so how's it gonna come over from our Shelby system now? It's gonna come over however, if they're all individual, there'll be individuals over here too. Okay. But then you can go into there and then if you do add existing person, that lets you pull from the, do a drop down, find that record and then link them together. Okay. So yes, you do need to be careful. Like Ken said, if someone passes away, you have to be sensitive to what the labels are gonna look that combines the family then you want to make sure it doesn't get the, you know, upset a, a widow or something because it's got the husband's name on that. We can add individuals under Adam family. Yes. We can add individuals. But there was a family link in Shelby. You know, if you wanted to change. But I mean, if you wanted to change an address, it would say, do you want us to change the address for the whole family? So there is a link somewhere in there. So now, since they were, we're wanting the families all together now, so we're going to have to go in individually and put all these families together. Unless there's some way that we, if there's some way we can identify who they are, but again, you can't look at the last name or you can't look at, I guess you can look at last name and address and then maybe yeah, link those families together. That are all through college, so they have a different address. So, so again, most of that's probably going to need to have some personal attention. Uh -huh. Under the record member status tab there where you are, campus is required to be able to assign envelopes. What are those two? Okay, campus is only assigned because I've activated it in this database. So if you're not using campus function, then it wouldn't be there. But you may choose to use the campus function to identify the district. Yeah. So that's a possibility, and that would then you would want that to be required. No, we changed the, the conference. Uh, a sign envelope would be if you're using uh, contribution envelope numbers, which in that case you, you wouldn't. <coughs> and I find that more and more churches are not either. The more and more they're not requiring envelopes. Would you scroll over the contact info page? Oh, how individual does that get? Hmm. Well, you, this is what you put in, but then once I make this record, it'll pull up the records. If I need to add another email address or another uh, another phone number, I can. So that's just from the wizard, and then it'll give you more options once you click uh, finish. Okay, quit yelling. No, that's because I didn't have. Do it right, I know. Okay, first new part. Camp, there we go. All right, we'll put campus in here. Maybe they'll stop yelling at me. <laughs> I hate it when you know, yell at me in front of all my friends. <laughs> all right, so then again, if I click on I can edit anything in here without going to the wizard. But if I click Lane Family and that little option there, that takes me to the wizard. And then the addresses take me to the wizard. So anything else, like if I want to just add email addresses, that's fine. <coughs> now you notice that the email address has an active option and an add bulk email option. And a note if I want to. So active means, okay, someone. I mean, I don't know, maybe there's logic behind this, but they, so many yeah. times churches say, well, I'm going to give you this email address, but I don't want you to use it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. When well, email is your registration key. <laughs> I guess so. But So they had this one that's active, but then there's this one out here is inactive. They gave it to you, but they don't want you to use it. Okay. 
the bulk mail is an option that is available for, um, again, to keep you off the blacklist for internet service providers. And it has a, 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 a subscribe, unsubscribe at the bottom of any bulk email. Now, generally, that's used for big, huge, massive emails, not your department emails. Because you really don't want someone to subscribe, unsubscribe to your email, to your local emails. Uh, but you can put that in the template. If you wanted to, you could have in a template, you could have subscribe, unsubscribe, and have that email to you when they want to do that. But uh, so that typically those, you're going to leave those alone. If you're using email and the system is, uh, uh, it activates that email because it's bad, no longer exists, so we'll put a note there <coughs> saying uh, inactivated by Shelby email clean agent. The, the bulk email, if it's the subscription, unsubscribe, subscribe, unsubscribe, does that then go on every email? You should you send to that address? Anything that is selected as a bulk email. Any so, any, uh, any um, communication that is selected. Correct. So you would not check it on most your emails. Yeah. Okay. Now, one thing that is another of uh, the relationships here. Obviously, this is your primary family. You also have the we're able to link. Like, for example, talk about the college student. You know, you may move him out of the family when he gets to a certain age. We're just linking back using relationships. Let him have his own household as he moves out. Uh, now in V5, this is where you did your church relationships. The problem with this is these relationships do not have dates. So I do not know that this person was a treasurer for this church for this time frame. It's just so that's why we moved when we convert all those into the appointments instead of the relationships. So that we can keep those dates. I, I guess yeah. dates. Uh, well, some some conferences use dates, some don't. I guess y'all use dates for your. Yeah. yeah. What's that for your? Appointments. It goes under appointments. Mm -hmm. Appointments means that this is where. Uh, we can take a look at that real quick. That would also be for district um, officers. I mean, people who have held some kind of an office. And it was a, a term. Yeah, the only place you can do the. You have to add Lassie in there in appointments too, right? There's the Go Balls district. Looks like this is. <laughs> is this all your districts? <laughs> Interesting. I guess we played in this. Yeah. <laughs> So, so in, in order, other words, under appointments now, we'll be putting like people on the mm -hmm. So in order to get um, all the information, we're going to be adding possibly a person in the, um, add the family section and then going to appointments to add a further service. Yeah, I believe. Now, again, we'll, there'll be some more discussion with them. I think that's what the plan is. Uh, again, they just have never uh, put in the um, put in the date range on the on the relationships. Yes, two pages. Yep, and you have know, this one open, and I can just do. Uh, they may have the membership. Right mouse click on me, open a new tab, and so then it's now it's open here and here. And because it's in the same browser, you don't have to log in again. Okay. Questions about things we've talked about so far today? We've covered a lot of ground. We did an overview of the, of the system. We looked at the person detail page. We spent a lot of time looking at uh, groups and tags and differences and similarities. Uh, we talked about lists and public lists. So, questions, comments? So, when all this stuff goes over from the old shelf to the new, and since everything in relationships 
that's not going to come over to appointments. We won't have to go in now. No, we'll, that will convert it to that. It will convert to appointments. Yes, that's why, 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 why too much work for you to do manually. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Very much. Yes. We've heard that one yes, twice. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's no other questions, what we'll do is we will take a break and camp people will stay. The rest of you can enjoy the afternoon. And then, uh, Angela, just the admins come back tomorrow. And well, on the, on the list, if anybody's interested, I mean, it's the, the admins of the first part of the day, we're going to talk about um, forms. And again, what this is, this is the discussion for everybody to learn about the system. We're still setting it up, we're still tweaking it. How you want it, how it's going to be, we're all learning. So, what you're seeing, I wanted everybody to see what the system will do. It will be customized to Colston with our database, but there is a lot of personalization that you can do yourself to what you're doing with the mail list. We want to talk about the form and different forms that you can use, maybe for registration. And what I'm trying to accomplish is you not having to input this form 15 times and get it right in today. You know, it's possible for them that when you input the form to map it to where it needs to go. So that, that's what I want you all to think about is how, how we can possibly set it up to reduce the time that you're spending getting a piece of paper Yeah, we did that. We've already, we've already done that. Oh, you've already done it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they wanted to see the, the giving part so for charitable contributions. working by 
behind the scenes. Uh, communication, we, we've had discussions. Uh, we've had two or three uh, with Shelby. So we're working on the setups now. Uh, but it takes time. There's a lot of setups. There's a lot of setups. We're, we're hoping to go live with the rain and the financial in March first. But we have stuff we have to do before we that's why we couldn't do this now because the information is going to happen. That's why we kept it. Tomorrow morning is the thing for the for the admins because the admins work on a different level that the Congress has. The office. So this was for everybody to see here, but uh, 